Hello, I'm Greg Plagman, executive producer of Person of Interest. I'm here on behalf of the writers, uh, creator Jonah Nolan, executive producer Denise Tay, and I'm here to talk about any lingering questions you might have about the show Person of Interest. A lot of people have asked us about the end of the show, and the question always emerges, did you know where you were going? And the answer to that is yes. I helped bring you into this world. Now I'm going to help usher you out. We always knew there would emerge a rival AI and that eventually one of them would have to be vanquished. The only question uh, was, would the machine survive? Uh, we think the ending that we came up with was the most poetic version. Should be a movie, Harold. It's gonna get a little exciting up here. When Harold Finch hired John Reese in the pilot, he told him, you know, we'll probably both wind up dead. And in fact, you know, John Reese has sacrificed everything in his private life uh, for his government, uh, even pushing away the love of his life. And in the final moment where Reese realizes on that rooftop what he has to do uh, is sacrifice himself for Harold, it, it just felt so right. It felt so poetic that this character understood this was his greatest purpose in life. And that's how we came up with the decision uh, to end it the way we did. I think it's pretty definitive that Samaritan was taken out at the end. Um, if you remember, you know, the voiceover that we started the season with, uh, that was the bookend. We were giving you, uh, telling you a chapter uh, that was going to happen in the future. Um, Joan had mentioned three years ago at Comic-Con, we were going to give you know, the machine a voice, but you're not going to like it. Um, and that voice, of course, was, was Root. You, you know who I am, sweetie. Big sister. He took her voice. So in, in Root dying and sacrificing herself for Harold and the machine, uh, she transcends in, in, in some sense and becomes, um, you know, the voice of the machine. So you know, when we hear her, that voice come through in the end, and, you know, let me see Shaw pick up the payphone. And maybe this isn't the end at all. There's just that glimmer. There's that glimmer of hope that we think is, uh, is kind of fun. What does the machine say to Shaw? In the end, a lot of people uh, would like to know. I I'll leave that open to your interpretation. I think the machine chooses to communicate with whomever it wants. Um, obviously, uh, it can still reach out to Shaw uh, and the voice of Root, um, or it could be a new team. Episode 511, we showed the existence of another team receiving orders from the machine. When, when, when Team Machine went to Washington, D.C., those three were sort of representing the, the idea that there were perhaps other people in other cities that could be operating at the machine's behest. You guys do what we do? What, you thought New York had the market cornered on murder? How many more of us you think there are? Could be none, could be many. We think that was a really fun idea, and it also answered the question, people say, oh, the numbers only come up in New York. Well, maybe they were coming up elsewhere all along, or maybe in the future, the machine can communicate with others, and uh, this isn't the end. You know, I think we always believed that Fusco deserved uh, to have a normal life uh, for so long. He sort of kept under the thumb of, of Reese in some ways. And I think we'd love to see Fusco find someone and move on with his life. Uh, he made such a disaster of his, his personal life in the past. Um, and, and of course, what, what happened with Harold Finch in the end, we think it's, it's lovely that at least one of our characters was able to reunite with, with someone close to them. As for Shaw, well, Shaw told us initially that she was in it for the dog. So I can imagine that uh, Shaw and Bear have gone off and found other adventures. Person of Interest was the most compelling in terms of its concept. The beauty of what Jonah created uh, was this idea that uh, felt a little bit science fiction five minutes out in the future and then you begin to understand eventually that 
everything we, we talked about on the show that people believed to be science fiction was in fact grounded in something that people were trying to develop right now. In this case, of course, uh, it was artificial intelligence. Um, and the emergence of an artificial super intelligence is something we're on the precipice of. Uh, the other thing about the show was um, taking the surveillance state as a given. Uh, it wasn't until the Snowden revelations came out that people really truly accepted that that was something you know we, we were out in front of. Um, and for me, that's kind of where I want to live as a writer. It feels to me that, that, that sometimes like the, that reality is so much more interesting than, than straight fiction. And, uh, and I think there's a way to take those ideas and meld them into really compelling concepts. I think you know, all our future projects, both for, for myself and Jonah, it's kind of the space we want to operate in. I think what I would love for people to say was the show was thought provoking. That the show was something that, that made them stop and think, you know. If an episode ended and you didn't do a double take with your smartphone, then we haven't done our job. You know, these are things that we should be talking about at an international uh, consortium level where people need to come to an agreement to say, hey, if we're going to build something that's smarter than us, shouldn't we take the care to understand whether it gives a crap about humanity? Uh, and, and I think that was one of the major themes of the show, and it's something that we're all dealing with right now. For me, the big thing with people to say, hey, that was a really good show, you should check it out. I just want to say on behalf of myself, Jonah Nolan, Denise Tay, and all the writers, uh, we want to thank the fans, the, the incredibly passionate fans, all you irrelevants out there. We want to thank our cast, incredible cast and crew, and everyone who made this show possible. Um, Chris Fisher, our, our producer director, Margot Lilick, our line producer, uh, all our department heads. Thank you to CBS, thank you Warner Brothers and Bad Robot. Couldn't have done it uh, if you didn't let us, and uh, we're extremely grateful. Goodbye. <laughs>